What's up, everybody? It's Kyle. You're in the Whiskey Crossing, and 2020 is finally coming to a close. It is December 6th as of this filming, less than a month to go. 2021 is in our sights. We're very excited about that. Of course, it might be another terrible year, but you know what? It really can't get worse than 2020. At least we know what to expect. Um, to make matters worse, my child care provider just ditched us this past week. So um, I'm going into a new work week with three kids in the house, um, a wife who works also full time remotely, and no one to watch our kids. So I'm supposed to be working right now because I can't work during the day. All right. So it's Sunday night. Like I said, I'm supposed to be working. But instead, I'm drinking whiskey. Um, the child care that I referred to was actually an au pair who lived in my basement um, over yonder somewhere. Basement, bedroom. So she's gone, and I have the space back to myself. So that's good. Trying to take the most of that. And I'm pretty lazy with editing. So I have a few videos I've already shot that I'm trying to get out. But I'm also just trying to get some content out. And, you know, I'm, I'm going lazy with the phone tonight. And I hope you can accept that. But the content is going to be at its regular level. Um, I don't know what regular level is for Whiskey Crossing at this point. We're just kind of getting our feet wet here, but I'm going to go through actually my whiskeys of the year for 2020 and, you know, shout out to Steinert Soccer of the year 2000, back when the year 2000 sounded uh, pretty exotic, but yeah, the, the 2020 is 20 years ago, so I played high school soccer 20 years ago, do that math, or not, please don't, please don't do that math, um, now I make whiskey videos, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to go through my best, well, I'm going to go through my whiskeys of the year, and 2020 for me, just to give you a little bit of background, is probably the first year I've been on the downswing of whiskey purchasing. Um, my collection, I really got into whiskey at the end of 2017, Mostly ramped up in 2018, had a few binge times in 2019. What you see behind me in my new house is, um, this is about two thirds of what I have. So take half of this wall and I have another one of these around. I have a wine room, I have shelves in the front, I have a bar cart upstairs so I'm not an alcoholic but I really bought a lot of whiskey <laughs> what can you say anyway like I said ramped up 2018 2019 more of the same um, and now 2020 I've definitely decreased the bottles that I've been purchasing um, partially because I was paying two mortgages for like half the year uh, when I moved and couldn't sell my house. So cutting down dramatically there. And then um, just realizing I had enough and nothing, you know, things weren't exciting as much. Uh, they were harder to come by. So it was more opportunistic than anything in 2020. And a little bit of a surge here at the end of the year with some some purchasing and some online ordering, but um, I seem to do that every year at the end of the year, and this year is probably, again, less significant than the last two. So I'm still on the downslope. We'll, we'll try to continue that downward in 2021 and more enjoyance of what I already have. Um, I don't drink that much. <laughs> um, I just buy the bottles. Um, I drink everything that I buy, but I don't drink it very often. So 
<clears throat> I'm going to go through my best bottles of the year. Um, the point of that last ramble was that I didn't try as many new bottles this year. So just a few um, ground rules for you before we get into it. I'm not going to talk about only bottles that I bought this year, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to limit it to bottles that I opened this year, obviously tried for the first time this year, and bought within a reasonable amount of time, like I bought it in late 2019. Um, there's one exception to that. I bought this uh, Highland Park 25 in um, like August of 2018, and I just opened it this year during quarantine. It's actually my new top rated whiskey of everything. And I'm not going to count that. So I just, I feel like I bought it too long ago. And it's the fact that it's been sitting here is uh, not a point, a reason to disqualify it. So we're going to ignore anything that I had sitting around for a long time. If we didn't ignore that, this would be the whiskey of the year. Um, but it's an older bottling and I've had it for a little bit longer of a period of time. So we're going to talk only about the bottles I opened and tried in 2020 that I purchased the second half of 2019 or later. So we're going to start with the first category. I don't even know what to call it. I'm going to call it the best budget bourbon. You've got to be kidding me. The baby is waking up. Damn it. Maybe she'll go back to sleep. We're just going to keep this rolling. Um, just one moment. I think we're going to... Okay, we're going to keep going. I think she's settled. That's really why I haven't been down here. The baby wakes up, like, so early every night. She's terrible at sleeping. Okay, first category, back on track here. Entry level, I'm not going to call it entry level. Budget, affordable bourbon slash craft bourbon. They're one category. Uh, it's a craft bourbon, but I don't have a category for craft bourbon. And it's also my best affordable bourbon under $50. So, and it's not entry level. Um, but here you go. And I actually did a review of this one, which I was just watching, which inspired me to just film this on my phone, because I filmed that one on my phone. At least you're getting the landscape uh, format, though, this time. This is the Chattanooga Whiskey. What do they call it? The uh, Tennessee High Malt 111. And this bottle really surprised me. Um, I believe the Bourbon Junkies mentioned it in a live stream at some point. Um, it was $45 at Sealbox. You can still get it. I've heard the 91 proof is also uh, quite good. Um, this is the slightly higher proof one, which I'm going to likely pick most of the time. Um, and this is a little bit interesting to me. It's, it's two types of malted barley um, and a higher malt ratio in the mash bill. So it got a little bit away from the traditional bourbon notes. It was definitely, I would say, very much less sweet, less um, less vanilla, a little more on the malty side, a little more dry, um, which I really, really appreciated. I don't like overly sweet whiskeys. That's kind of the thing that's going to kill it for me is if it's overly sweet, um, I'll mention just real quick in passing the, uh, Old Forester 1910 I just opened. Way too sweet for me. I, I was not a fan. So that's just my palate. You may appreciate the sweeter, uh, whiskeys, but I don't. I like something that's a little bit drier and oakier. And this one really did it for me. This was really surprising. Uh, the Chattanooga 111. I would definitely recommend this. Check out the 91 if you see it. I'm sure that's quite good as well, um, but the the 111 is my affordable bourbon or craft bourbon of the year 
for 2020. Peace. We're going to keep going. I don't know why I said peace. Okay. <clears throat> the next one is actually a bourbon that I just drank tonight. So this is going to be the higher end or, or more expensive bourbon. Um, and the winner for this category is... I have two winners again because I broke the rule. Um, Michter's 10. I bought Michter's 10 actually in early 2019. So I just opened it actually like less than a month ago, uh, about a month ago in November of 2020. Um, and what can I say? I mean, if you know bourbon, you know Michter's 10 is well regarded. I mean, this is the bourbon, not the rye. I think the rye is even supposed to be better. But it's just, it's just really good. Um, it's delicious. It tastes like, it smells like toasted marshmallow and it tastes like graham cracker. Um, so if you can't go out and make a s'more, you come and you drink Michter's 10. Um, but in all seriousness, I mean, it, it's, it's just so good. It is a drinkable proof. It's only 94 uh, 94.4 proof. Um, but it has enough richness for sure. Um, it's sweet enough to be really delicious, but not overly sweet. It doesn't really have any fruit notes that I'm picking up. It's very, you know, toasted marshmallow, toasted oak, um, caramel. I said cherry vanilla Coke, but cherry vanilla Coke isn't like overly cherry sweetness. Um, yeah, it's just really, really good. And I'm going to probably drink this one down pretty quick, which I don't do very often, but I'm going to, I'm going to drink this pretty regularly because it's just that good. And you know, it was, it was on the pricier side. This is the pricier category. I think I paid about $110, which really isn't bad at all. For this bottle, I would pay 110 all day for this. I'd probably pay, um, you know, I'd probably play, pay like 140 realistically, um, 130, 140 for this bottle. Um, I think it is that good. So this is my, my winner. Now, if I disqualify this as being purchased too early, the one I was going to go with is the Bardstown. And I'm going to actually pour this real quick. This is the Bargetown Discovery Series Part 2. I'm just going to get a little taste. Um, this is another one that I got at Sealbox in that same order with the Chattanooga. I've talked about that order quite a bit. Um, I love that they have the breakdown of the blend on here. So we got a 10-year a uh, bourbon, a 12-year... Well, they're all, they're all bourbons. They're all from Kentucky. A 10-year, a 12-year, and a 14-year of various percentages and they give the exact mash bill of each. So that's really cool just from a, a transparency standpoint, which, you know, I definitely applaud. Um, the whiskey itself is really good. I do think it's a little bit hot. Uh, it is 61.1%, but I still think I've had plenty of whiskeys that are 61.1% that are not as hot. Let me see if that's still the case. But the nose is is really rich, um, definitely high ABV, but a really beautiful, you know, traditional caramel vanilla nose. So you definitely get those older notes. You get a little more of a dry oak, uh, maybe a bit of leather. And, you know, again, for me, I'm not going for the overly sweet. Um, so this is one, and actually with water, this bourbon really shines. Um, so this is one that, that you definitely want to add a drop or two to kind of bring everything out and open it up. Um, but this is, a, this is a delicious whiskey, especially if you like it on the drier side, the oakier side, um, 
but with still, you know, those traditional bourbon notes. This is one you're going to love. So Bardstown Discovery Series number two. Um, and again, that one price-wise was in that uh, $120, $125 range. So, you know, the between the M10 and that Bardstown, pretty similar in price and, uh, you know, both really excellent in their own ways. Which leads me to the bourbon of the year. I'm just going to finish this barge down real quick. Mm. All right. I don't know if you saw me pull it off the shelf, but bourbon of the year. Right, it's the Four Roses. Hold on, let me uh, <clears throat> kind of kill my, my screen here. It's the Four Roses limited edition small batch from 2019. I bought this and tried it in 2020. It is eligible all the way around. Um, this is actually the most I've spent on a bourbon. I guess you could say I paid secondary for this. I bought it online from overseas. Um, and it's actually a 70 centiliter size. So I bought this from the UK. Um, oh no, I didn't. I bought it from Fine Drams, which I think is Netherlands or something. Um, I mean, this is the best bourbon that I've ever had. It's that, it's just, one of my favorite bourbons actually is the Four Roses single barrel right here and when I drink this I think this is the best bourbon that I can think of I can't think of anything wrong with it what I did was I side-by-sided the limited edition with the single barrel you know barrel strength um, and this was just it pointed out all the flaws of this one um, I mean this is just, I mean, you gotta, you gotta taste it a little bit right now, but this is just, um, it's just kind of perfect for me. And, you know, I was reading actually up about the 2020 release, which just came out recently within the last month or two, the 2020 Four Roses. And everyone's been saying in, re you know, reading these reviews that it's, it's good, um, but it doesn't quite live up to the 2019, which was actually considered the best year for the Four Roses limited edition in a quite a long time. Um, that it, this is kind of the, the pinnacle. So this is one that, um, you know, I paid uh, quite a bit. I think I paid 320, um, which is a lot. Uh, I've paid more for quite a few scotches. So, you know, I, I kind of splurged on this bottle, but I didn't, again, overall for the year, I'm, I'm way down. So, oh, it's just, jeez. It's so much fruitier, more floral, but it's not sweet. It's not it's just perfect. I mean, it's, it's definitely a different style than like the Mixers 10. A lot more floral. You got some bright fruits uh, going on, but you still have the age. You still have the maturity and the complexity. And I can just nose this for, for a long time. I mean, the Mixers 10 nose is phenomenal. I would have very much considered the Mixers 10 bourbon of the year, you know, had I not picked this one up. Hmm. <laughs> 
you got... What do you say about this? I mean... It's not... It's not a BTAC. I've never had any Pappies, actually. But I've had quite a few BTACs. It's not the intensity. It's just... It's refined. It's complex. It kind of hits all the notes. Floral, fruity, oaky, vanilla... It's, I'm not, I can't believe I'm about to say this. It's smooth. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't. Um, it's smooth and it's 56.3%. I mean, it's just, I, I, sir, I actually um, shared this at Valentine's Day. I, we actually hosted my, my mom and my sister and my sister's fiance for Valentine's Day. Um, and I served this one, I think I had just received it, that, that was in February. So I think I got this in early February of 2020. Um, and I mean, my sister loved it, my mom loved it. Uh, they're not connoisseurs by any means, but they appreciate what's good. And, you know, they like to, they like to explore when they're here, certainly. And this was one that they really enjoyed, so. Um, you know, it's friendly, but it's also really, really complex and interesting, and you can dig into it, and you can spend a lot of time with it. Um, it kind of has it all. So, that's the Bourbon of the Year Four Roses Limited Edition Small Batch. I'm going to move on to other types of whiskey. I've already spent 22 minutes just on bourbon, and... We're only like a third of the way through the video. So I'm going to pause here. I'm going to cut the clip, move on. If you want to stick around, I'm going to go into... We're going to go to some rye, some scotches, some other world whiskeys. Stick around. We'll be back in a flash. 